Hey everyone, welcome back to Body Hair and Soaps. Um, it's been a while since I uploaded a video. Life has been absolutely crazy. Some of you um, that have been following my channel for a while, some of you are aware that I have gone back to work full time after the flood and everything that happened. I mean, the cost of rebuilding and everything else. I have had to go back to work full time, which is should be 40 hours a week. However, I did take a manager's position that somehow magically turned into 60 hours a week. So between that and then coming home, you'll notice a lot of my videos are videoed at night. You'll, it'll look dark outside because that's when I have time. Um, and this last month has been absolutely crazy for me um, with everything going on, a bunch of changes at work and then trying to finish off. Uh, we are just about done rebuilding the office. Once I get my office all rebuilt, I will bring you some footage of that so you can see how I redesigned that. I have completely changed my office, um, but we're getting there. All right, so let's get into today's video. Today's video is going to be all on making a hemp seed oil emulsified butter. Um, there's many different ways to make a body butter um, you can do it strictly with oils, which I do do, um, but I just label it a little bit different because that would be an authentic body butter. To me, a body butter is just that. It is oils and butters. There is no water added, any of the other stuff. You start getting into those large amounts of waters and things like that. That is a lotion. There is a product called an emulsified body butter, which I find to still be way more hydrating than a lotion. However, it, it does contain some distilled water in it, so it is classified as an emulsification. So that is what we're going to do today. Um, a lot of people like this better than an actual true body butter, or what I would consider a true body butter, simply because it's less greasy, those types of things. So if you've been trying to formulate that perfect body butter that is less greasy and everything else, um, it's pretty hard to do with a regular body butter. I mean, I have played around with that for years. I have customers that specifically just want the 100% body butters, which I still make and I still sell. Um, however, I have a lot of customers that don't like it because of the greasy texture. Um, and it can be, I mean, I've got it fine tuned to where it says least greasy as I can get, but a body butter is a body butter. Okay, at the end of the day, I see all kinds of videos of trip, tips and tricks and things to make a less greasy body butter. Yes, those are reality, but you're always going to have that heavier, greasier feeling when you are doing those 100% oils and butters. So the emulsified butter, uh, body butter is a good option um, in the case of where you want to have that really high oil butter content yet still have it absorbed quickly into the skin and have that less greasy feel. So that's my opinion. And there may be a million other opinions out there and that's fine. On this channel, I just bring the information and research that I have done. I am, you know, 100% self-taught. So do I know everything? Absolutely not. No, none of us do. I, I really, that's just how it is. Um, but this is how I formulated my emulsified body butter for my customers that like that less greasy feel. So let's get into that. As always, I have all of my ingredients weighed out. You guys don't need to see me weigh ingredients um, in the video. You guys should all know how to weigh out your ingredients, whether it be a small amount or large amount. I have two different size scales. So when I'm weighing the very light amounts, um, one or two grams, then I use my smaller scale and then I use my bigger scale for other things. But you guys are all aware of that. So everything has already been weighed out and we're ready to go. All right, so first of all, we wanna go through, um, we're gonna start off with our water phase. So our water phase is going to consist of our glycerin, okay? And this is just a vegetable-based glycerin. We have our um, anthem gum, okay? So the anthem gum is something that's going to add that really silky feel to this product, and I really like it. Now you could make it without the glycerin and the anthem gum. Um, for my Patreons, all the percentages and stuff are going to be on my Patreon site um, along with the upload of this video, but I really like using it. It really does make a huge difference. You could try making this both ways, um, but I really do like using this in, um, in my 
emulsifications, okay? It just really gives a lot of harmony, so to say, to uh, the high emollient uh, anhydrous product. Okay, so I have my vegetable glycerin in here. Now, the first thing that you want to do is you want to mix your anthem gum into your glycerin. Now, you want to make sure that you get this dissolved well. If I was just to put this into the water, I'd end up with clumps and everything else. So glycerin helps us to dissolve this more appropriately. So we do have our vegetable glycerin separate and then our anthem gum, and then I do have my distilled water. So the amount of the vegetable glycerin is 25 grams in here, okay? So we have 25 grams of the vegetable glycerin that we will use. And then we have our 2.5 grams of anthem gum. And you will see when I mix this in there, it kind of creates kind of the sludgy mix. Um, but that's what you want. You want to make sure you stir until this is well dissolved. So we're going to put the 2.5 grams of the anthem gum in there. And we're just going to stir until this is all mixed in and starts to hydrate that anthem gum, um, but doesn't leave lumps and chunks. As I said, like as you can see, that's stirring in really nice into there. And if I was to mix this into water, I would end up with lumps and stuff like that. So you wanna make sure that you get this mixed really well in there. And for the time being, I'm just going to set this aside and let that sit for a minute. Now, I don't know if it's necessary that you leave this sit to the side for a second, but I like to allow that anthem gum to um, completely, I don't know if you'd call it blooming, but uh, to completely hydrate. So I just leave it sit for a few minutes and let that, make sure that happens and I'm not going to have lumps and stuff before I mix it with my water. Meanwhile, while that's sitting for a minute, we're going to take um, a heat safe bowl. You can do this on a double boiler in a microwave, whatever works for you. I tend to use the double boiler method a lot of the times for my products simply because you start to get oils and butters too hot. You break down the properties of them. And I just feel like it's not as healthy for the skin when we start to trans um, transform those at the molecular level from that heat. So I like to do things in a more controlled environment with the double boiler method. So this is a heat safe bowl that I can put on top of my pot of water. And in here we are going to put in, we're going to put in our hemp seed oil. Now you'll notice that I am using um, the refined hemp seed oil. Now you can use just the regular unrefined or organic hemp seed oil. This will work exactly the same. The reason I'm doing this is because I am doing a peach bellini scent and I want it to be a lighter color. Um, the he darker unrefined hemp seed oil will change the color of this batch and I want this to be a very light color. So I don't really want that shining through. So this is refined. Um, and it's fast absorbing, really good for the skin. Hemp seed brings so much properties to the skin. Um, in saying that, it's something that I may not use on the face, um, but depending on the product, but hemp seed oil is brings some amazing properties to the skin. So that is why I make my body butters with hemp seed oil. And in here I have 75 grams of the hemp seed oil and I'm using the refined but you can use um, the organic or the unrefined hemp seed oil that is fine okay so 75 grams of the hemp seed oil in there and then I'm going to put in 50 grams of mango butter I like using mango butter um, you can use shea butter in here as well if you wanted to exchange that out. I find this gives a very silky smooth feel to the skin um, and it absorbs a little bit better and it doesn't really leave a grainy texture in your body butters. Now if you wanted to use Shea 
Um, just really watch where you're heating it to. You don't want it. You have to get it hot enough that you're not having that grainy texture, but not too hot to break down the properties. It's a little bit more finicky, but you could absolutely use shea butter in this, which is a little bit more cost effective. I like using the mango butter. It brings some amazing properties to this, and I find that it's a lot easier to work with as far as the grainy texture goes. So 50 grams of the mango butter. And when I explain why I use things, you guys, this is my opinion and my research. So feel free to do your own research and, and playing around and things like that. You do what works for you. There is lots of ways you can change a formulation um, to more meat. I mean, if your whole business is built on shea as a main ingredient, shea butter, then I mean you would use a shea butter in this and that's perfectly fine. If your company is based on shea butter, well you should have a lot of knowledge about shea butter so you shouldn't have any problems working with it. If cost effectiveness is more of an issue, then absolutely play around with it. You could do a smaller batch. This is going to be a 500 gram batch um, and play around with the shea butter at, at smaller levels until you get it to the right formulation and process that works for you. All right, so we have our mango butter in here. And then I'm also going to use um, Olivium 1000. So it's an olive derived um, emulsif emulsifier. And we are going to put 20 grams. I find this gives the body butter a way lighter texture than an e-wax or any of those other things. So that is why I use it in here. It's a little bit more expensive of emulsifier. Um, and I've had a lot of questions about emulsifiers, so I am working on a video um, on specifically emulsifiers and the different types and how to choose which emulsifier you're going to use. Um, but I am using the Olivium um, 1000 in here, and we are putting in 20 grams. Okay, so that is one of our emulsifiers. And then we are going to put in glycerol um, stearate as well. And this is going to be our co-emulsifier um, and add some stability to this. It's, it's a very nice product and you won't see it in a lot of the basic ones. I don't actually use a lot of this, but there's some recipes that um, I really think it's important that you use this um, in there as your co-emulsifier. But I have 10 grams of the glycerol stearate. Okay, so those are my emulsifiers. Now I have my um, acetyl alcohol as my stabilizer and thickener that I am going to use. And in here I have 12.5 grams of the acetyl alcohol. And that is going to be my oil phase. So this here is going to get put onto the double boiler. And we are going to allow this to completely melt until it is completely translucent and once that's done I will bring you back. So this is completely melted down, translucent as you can see. Um, it's pretty warm right now but we want that to all be completely melted down. No white specks, anything like this. Um, just completely translucent. You can see without that hemp seed oil in there how clear this is. So we're going to have a very white lotion. Um, if you use the unrefined hemp seed oil, you're going to get that slight green tinge to it, which isn't bad, and, and, but just for aesthetic purposes, I go with the refined. All right, so in here I have that anthem gum and vegetable glycerin all stirred, mixed, ready to go. And it has thickened quite a bit since I just left it sit there. Now, in the water phase here, I have 290 grams of the distilled water. And we are just going to pour a little bit in and continue to stir until this is completely dissolved and mixed in. When you start to use the anthem gum, um, and you can see this is getting quite thick now that I've added that water in there. It is quite jelly. All right, and we're just going to continue to add a little bit at a time. Um, you could just dump it all in there, but I just, 
I just have a way that I do things, but you don't have to do it slowly like this. I choose to just to make sure that I've got the mixture completely dissolved and in there. And you will see that this simple distilled water with that little bit of vegetable glycerin and um, anthem gums becomes this jelly mixture. So as you can see, I don't know if you guys can see that, but it's quite jelly fall fine. I'll get a spoon here and show you guys, but you want to make sure that it is completely dissolved in there. that a little bit full. I'm actually going to take this little bit of water I have left and I'm just going to make sure that I get all of that anthem gum out of there. So quick fix for a little bigger container. Um, now if you guys can see in there that's you know what distilled water looks like. You can tell this is this is quite jellyfied in there. You can see the little ridges being left. Like this has turned into basically a jelly. I'm just going to leave this sit for a second. I'm going to check the temperature on that. Um, you can see that is crystal clear and completely dissolved. And I just take the extra steps just to make sure that it completely dissolves. I don't wreck a batch of this um, by not having some of it dissolved. Let's check the temperature of my heat phase, my oil phase. All right, so that's down to 160 Fahrenheit. So I think that we're good to go. So we're going to take our oil phase and then our water phase, which is our glycerin, anthem gum, and distilled water. And then in here we have our hemp seed oil, mango butter, um, Olivium 100, acetyl stearate, and acetyl alcohol. Or sorry, glyceryl stearate and acetyl alcohol. And we're going to blend these. And because of the emulsifiers, this becomes that wonderful emulsification. Um, all of us know from lotions and things like that. So we're just going to pour this in and right away you'll start to see the emulsification take place. And you want to really blend this quite well um, with the little bit of anthem gum in there. You can see it goes quite jelly-like. And you're going to stir this while it's fairly warm. Start breaking it all up and getting that in there. You can see it kind of looks like cottage cheese, if you guys can see that. But this will start to all come together. I'm going to get my immersion blender and simply blend it and you'll see this comes to a nice thick lotion base. Okay, so you guys can see how thick this is, um, hence a body butter emulsification. Like you wouldn't put this in a lotion pump or anything like that, it would not work. It's going to have to be in a tub. And this, just mixing this the way that I have, it's already dropped down to 101 Fahrenheit. Um, so we're almost at that point, because it's a smaller batch, to be able to add in our cool down ingredients. So I am just going to scrape all of this off. because the rest I will mix in by hand because this is getting super thick. 
I'm going to scrape the sides, make sure we have all of the stuff all mixed in. And you can see how nice and thick and creamy this is. So that would not work in a lotion pump or anything. This has to go in a cup. I mean, this hasn't even completely cooled. It is going to get a lot thicker than this um, once it completely cools. But this is non-gritty, fast absorbing, and it feels amazing on the skin. This is my favorite um, to use. I do use the regular body butter, um, usually at nighttime applications because it is a very anhydrous uh, product and it really helps with hydrating the skin, feet, things like that. But this is the emulsified version which I absolutely love as well. Okay, so now as soon as this is below 100 degrees, I can start adding in my cool down products. We're still at 101, so I'm going to wait because I have plenty of time. This doesn't take long to cool down. And as I stir it, some of the air bubbles that the mixer put in there will start to come out. And as this cools, it will definitely get a lot thicker than this, so I will show you guys that once it cools down. Okay, so we are at 100 degrees Fahrenheit so now I can start adding in my cool down ingredients so one that I'm going to put in here is going to be the vitamin E um, that helps keep our oils it's not a preservative guys but it does help prevent oils from going rancid and we do have oils and butters in here so it's a great addition and vitamin E is great for the skin so not a preservative but does help extend shelf life of oils and butters so I am going to put in five grams so of the vitamin E. And you could mix all this together in one container. Um, and then put it in a little bit in and mix it, but I just dump it in like this. Okay, um, a preservative, you guys. So you could use... Um, Whatever preservative you want in this, make sure you're testing the pH, your preservative works in the right range. If preservative is something you have a question about, I, I should really do a more detailed one on, on preservatives, but I do have a video of preservatives if you want to go back and watch that. I am using Dermal Plus in here and I have five grams. And then last but not least, our fragrance oil, which is going to be our uh, peach bellini. And I am using five grams of this as well. Okay, and then I'm going to work at stirring this in. And you gotta stir quite a bit when you're doing it by hand, when you're mixing all this in, make sure you mix it really well. before capping, sealing, all those types of things. If you are going to sell this product, um, it's really important. I, I find a lot of people talk about all the labeling and, and all of this stuff. They've done their research on that, but also part of, at least in Canada, is you're supposed to have tamper-proof seals on your product. I, I've had a lot of questions about that because I do use the tamper-proof seals. Um, you should have that on there. You're supposed to be able to guarantee that the product has not been tampered with prior to purchasing. Um, and it states that right in the Health Canada regulations. Um, I'm, a lot of people aren't aware of that and they'll just put a cap on this and label it and call it done. I actually put a tamper roof seal on top of there in between my lid and the product itself. And then I actually also shrink wrap the seal so people can't take the lids off and tamper with it. So my containers all come tamper proof um, and following those guidelines. That all right, um, so as you guys all know, I am switching to the glass container. So I have four ounce glass containers with the metal aluminum lids. So these are recyclable. And this smells amazing. I love this. This is one of my favorite scents. It's a very light scent, not strong. 
um, not going to give people headaches kind of thing. All right, and you could use essential oils in this. Um, just make sure that you guys are um, doing your research on what it is that you're allowed to use for percentages in your essential oils. But you can see how nice this just pours into the jars. Okay, so as you guys can see, um, I have these all bottled up into the four ounce glass containers. Um, you're going to make sure that these completely cool before you cap these. You do not want any of the condensation to build in there and water to pool on top. That will cause a bacteria build really quickly. So make sure that these cool completely. My soap studio is in the basement, so it's a little bit cooler down here um, than your regular you know, 70 degrees, um, so it'll get a little cooler than that, and I will cap it. When I cap these, I do use these little pressure seals that maybe you guys have seen in other videos, but that is my tamper-proof seal, which will go on top of here, and when you screw the lid down, it actually creates a seal on there. Um, so I will put that on, and then I will get my label on there, and once my label's on there, then I use one of these shrink wrap bands and I actually shrink wrap around the lid and the jar to make sure that nobody can undo these lids and tamper with my products in any way. Okay, so that is how I do mine. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. This is a great recipe, even if you want to cut this recipe back and do a 100 gram batch just to try it out so you would have one four ounce jar um, to give this a try. Just as an example, with the little bit that I have left in here, um, so I can show you guys, I mean, this absorbs quite readily into the skin. It is definitely a body butter, as you can see, right? Definitely a little thicker than any lotion. You can see the white film on my skin. And I mean, you've seen how much I used. But when you rub it in, there is no greasy feel left. It doesn't have that greasy feel like a regular 100% body butter oil would. Um, it absorbs readily into the skin. So this is great, um, very hydrating emulsified body butter. So if you give this recipe a try, let me know how it goes for you. This works. It's a pretty simple, straightforward recipe. Um, and as I said, you can use it without the Anthem gum. Um, I find it adds that really silky feel to it. Um, I also use the Olivium 100 as my emulsifier just because I find it a way lighter emulsifier. Um, but it doesn't have that greasy feel of a body butter but it definitely has um, the anhydrous properties of a body butter okay all right so i hope you guys enjoyed this video and uh have a great day